Well, welcome everyone to this panel session. Now my, my panel members, um, going from right to left, are uh, Paulina Addy, who you might remember from our welcoming addresses the first day, the Deputy Director for Women in Agriculture at the Ghana Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Um, and then we have uh, Abdullah Ka, the National Coordinator of Celieu de Lutte contre la Malnutrition, an innovative national initiative in Senegal, and pardon my French. Um, uh, Victor Agiero, who is a senior program officer for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in Nigeria, but also the former advisor on nutrition to the Minister of Agriculture in Nigeria. Um, Anthony uh, Morrison, chief executive of the Ghanaian Chamber of Business and a farmer. Um, and uh, Lizzie Igbine, uh, national president of the Nigerian Women's Agro-Allied Agri Farmers Association. So um, thank you, panel, for agreeing to be with us today. So if I could um, ask our panel members first, um, fairly briefly, so we can get on to other things, to just give us a view of what, what in your view, are um, the main nutrition and food system challenges in the region of, of West Africa today? The challenges of uh, food and nutrition security can be linked to some policies that we've enacted, one of them being the trade policies. Now we have opened our borders to trade and we have all manner of foods coming in, both fresh and processed, competing with what we have here. And uh, for the fresh commodities, it means we have to match that with what we locally produce. And we have issues with the post-harvest, which we haven't uh, dealt properly with. I can cite example of some fruits, vegetables coming into the country and matching with what we produce. And now we are craving for some of the imports and to the detriment of what we produce. So we're losing on that front. For processed foods, yes, we have the sugars, we have the salt, we have the fat with these foods, and the increased consumption has led to the increased prevalence of obesity that we have observed, especially in children and also in adults. So for processed foods, these are the things we have to grapple with with our free trade policy. Abdullah. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'll talk about the, the nutrition challenges we have in, in our region. We know that we are facing high level of, of stunting and micronutrient uh, deficiencies in, in, in our region. And uh, as we are, uh, we are practicing and we are developing projects, uh, implementing projects uh, regarding nutrition, our main challenge is the scaling up. First one is the scaling up of those effective interventions. Uh, because we always say that we know what we have to do, but we are still looking uh, for um, an effective and full coverage of the most vulnerable population in our region. Um, we also um, are facing the lack of knowledge uh, regarding the, the determinants of, of the different type of malnutrition because you, we know that it's multisectoral and we know that we have to, to get to know exactly how um, health, the health determinants, the agriculture determinants, the trade determinants, educate, education determinants also, all the different relevant sectors uh, what, uh, what uh, their different determinants uh, um, are doing, uh, can, if we work on those different uh, determinants, how we can improve uh, the nutrition uh, situation. Uh, we have also some uh, challenges regarding uh, the policy framework we have in our countries. Uh, we know that we, we need to involve different sectors to work together in a synergic, synergetic way uh, to tackle uh, malnutrition. And we know that we, we, we need uh, sectors that are really pro-nutrition pro -nutrition 
integrating nutrition in their different policy and policies and strategies, and how uh, the the main the how to regarding the mainstreaming of nutrition is a key challenge also for for our countries. Regarding the food food system, uh, from a nutrition perspective, uh, we 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 don't see a model. We 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 always say, what is, what is our food system model in our countries? In Senegal, for example, we can't describe you in a precise way our food system. So w from there, we know that we, we have to build knowledge around the food system uh, to be aware of the different links we have between food system and health, between food system and nutrition, so that w we would be able to to, to work on opportunities and to, to build from those opportunities some improvement regarding the nutrition situation. It means that we need research. Yeah, thank you very much. The big thing I want to talk about is around policies and the big gap I see is around implementing policies. We have a lot of policies even though they may not have been well informed with evidence, with sufficient policy analysis and all that. But while evidence emerge and all that, and we know that policies will evolve and all that and be revised. But even what we have, I feel there's a serious gap around effectively imp implementing them in a way to achieve the kind of results we want to achieve working across the different sectors. And then reflecting that, I thought, how can we use evidence to challenge the culture of poor policy implementation? Because at the end, the indices, the World Health Assembly indices, the commitments we've made in Malabo Declaration, and all those indices will not change except we deliver results. And so why we begin to see increased political commitment, but how do we really move to translate that to action? And some experience shows that there are a few things that need to happen for us to be able to implement effectively. How do we influence adequate financing? How do we, how, how do we, because this is important, it shows government commitment, government ownership, government involvement in terms of finance, financing research and operations to be able to deliver the results. But another thing is you see very serious capacity issues in translating policy to action, in terms of the technical capacity. And then if you look at the cadre of people who are, who are supposed to do this, how many are those people who have the skills to be able to navigate the ag sector, the health sector, to be able to deliver effective results? And then bring partners, the private sector, into a shared space and to create the right understanding of these issues. And then I was reflecting on that, I, I felt also the strong leadership deficit. Uh, everything rises and falls in leadership. We're looking at who are those, how do we build those cadre of leaders who will be able to lead change and deliver results at scale. And this is important for West Africa, especially we're one of the worst regions in the world with the highest uh, level of malnutrition. The indices are bad. How do we, with a strong sense of urgency, drive that? And then see those kind of leaders who can assimilate complexity and transmit clarity. A kind of leaders who will be able to use evidence, understand evidence and then influence policymakers, navigate the policy community, the practice community. Who are these people? Where are they? We need them at this point in time. Our educational systems, our research systems, our institutional development strategies, are they helping us to get this kind of leaders who look as, who will use evidence to influence strategy, who will use evidence to influence the operational domain to deliver results, who also we use evidence to look at building partnerships and relationships 
that will help the liver and important results. Who will challenge those norms and be able to navigate effectively to deliver these results? So, uh, while I'm saying this, I'm also challenging this community to see we need this new cadre of leaders. As, and I don't, I don't want us to see these leaders are people who combine expertise in evidence and expertise in delivering results. And as we discuss building capacities in the use of data and generation, I would really see how do we address evidence -rel uh, leadership related issues in a way that can deliver results. This is a big gap I see in navigating the different sectors to deliver the kind of outcomes we have for, uh, for improved nutrition uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the domain of agriculture, food systems and nutrition. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the issue about uh, food security and nutrition uh, generally in uh, Ghana, for instance, has been spearheaded by FAO. Uh, we've worked in areas of food uh, nutrition and security, uh, looking at the environmental, sustainable natural resources management and also the rural development, resilient uh, livelihoods. Um, on the West African uh, terrain, uh, mostly it's been uh, the challenge of food security itself. Um, you first of all have to make sure the food is there before you start talking about the nutrition aspect of it. In West Africa, especially if you go back to the CADEP, recently in Gabon, where we have the Malibu Declaration, and um, if you look at the, the scorecard, which is the Accelerated Agriculture Growth and Transformation for Shared uh, Prosperity and Improved Livelihoods. Only one country in West Africa, Mali, had 5.6 on the scorecard. And uh, that was five uh, countries in Africa in a whole out of 53 countries, making it from the five points mark. That tells you the challenge we have uh, on the African continent. And uh, if you narrow it to West Africa, it's more of a challenge, and I would like to agree with uh, my other panelists here, because um, there is no strategic or coherent investment into research in the sub-region. And a country or any entity or organization that does not invest into research, data, um, I'm sorry to say there is always a situation, uh, a time bound, because um, you can go forward, you can do anything meaningful. Data is, uh, in West Africa is almost uh, non-existent. And we need to invest into data, and that means that uh, we need to also improve our uh, research. However, what I've also realized uh, from the perspective of the Chamber of Agribusiness is the fact that most of this research, um, the small ones that have been done, have always uh, lied on the shelves of the most institutions that do them. There is no uh, collaboration between the industry and uh, the academia. There, there is no linkages. A um, lot of good, good quality research um, are dusting away on the shelves of their academic institutions, and uh, that is not the, the best to say. Now, going forward, as an entrepreneur and a farmer, an agribusiness person, I want to advocate for the government within the sub region to make available part of its uh, cyberspace uh, because um, research today is done using the Internet of Things. And if we can make good use, if the governments of various countries within the sub-region cannot make available their cyberspace for research development uh, because it costs to do research, but um, with good Internet access, I'm sure research can be reduced to uh, quite a minimum. So while governments and political governments across the sub-region are investing in non-existent uh, projects which do not bridge development and also goes to promote food security and nutrition, we need to push them to make available a lot of things for the research and data development. Quite um, apart from that, if you look at what we currently you take, for instance, the uh, planting for food and jobs, which we are doing in Ghana now. There is no emphasis on nutrition. We're looking at food security. Uh, we, we are looking at rice, maize, sorghum, and uh, the vegetables. There is no emphasis on nutrition. And for me, it's also another question of 
government policies not taking into consideration expert advices. Okay, so we need also to look at how government takes policies and implements them. The implementers shouldn't be different from the, the people who actually put the policies together because they have to be um, involved in the process of implementing. Then also is the fact that if you take the orange flesh sweet potato, which we are promoting so aggressively, it's a very unique product, but government does not give a um, lot of support for some of these biofortified foods, okay? And some of these foods, if you go to, for instance, the northern region, the eastern and central and Bronga Alpha regions in Ghana, are, it's a product that can do very well and it cut across a lot of devices. And uh, talking about lactating mothers, children, and all that, this is a crop that can do very well. Its value chain is so huge. But government do not understand how such products or crops should be given the necessary attention. So I think that um, it's a multifaceted approach. What also we should do, and this is very important to me, is that for a country to move forward, Ghana, for instance, is too fixated on donorship. Donors are no longer in existence. Donors want to invest their money. They want to trade. And if a country is so fixated on donorship, excuse me, I mean, donors are now businessmen. So if we want to see the necessary steps being taken, we need to find a way of diversifying our, our challenges, move from donorship into a trade economy, and make sure that where we put a cent, we get a cent or more back. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to speak from the aspect of a woman and a producer. There are policies in nutrition, but we lack communication. These policies are not communicated to the producers, are not communicated to the users. Remember that nutrition starts from the woman, the child in the womb. When a woman is pregnant, what are they teaching her at the antenatal? The right food to eat? When the baby is put to bed, and we are asking a woman to do six months um, baby friendly, is the woman well fed? These are issues of policies that have been there, but the communication is very, very poor. It should be communicated at the antenatal world and to the families because it's the woman that brings up the food. She has to know how to cook the right food, even from her farm, from her garden. The, uh, the vegetables are there, but these women will cook without the vegetables. The chickens are there, but they will raise them to sell. These are policy issues. The women should be taught in their language that this is their right, and this is the right thing to do. Then another issue that is distorting the issue of nutrition is in governance. I have been saying it. Nutrition should rest on the Ministry of Agriculture. But in my own country, health is struggling. Before it comes to health, the food is being produced, so it should be produced right, with, the, with good seed, at the right time, with the right processing, drying in. If all these things are done, then the food is quality. But why should health be struggling that uh, it's about some, it's about scaling up? To scale up what? We should scale up in the farm first. We should scale up in our household first. These policies should be strengthened because often at times it's a problem to us. It makes the implementation failure because at the end of the day, health is struggling, agriculture is struggling, let people go and do the right things. That is what we should advise ourselves on policy. Thank you very much. Thank you, panel. So I know we've heard a lot about the problems, but I know there's some really interesting ideas, experiences that we could share about how these problems are being addressed. Um, and so I'm wondering, particularly in the institutions that you're all involved in, so I'm wondering if we could uh, perhaps um, 
uh, invite some, some thoughts on what to do about these challenges, what, what could be done, or particularly what is being done, what things are being tried out. Yeah, thank you very much. I believe policies have to be iterative. As you move along, you have to correct things as you go on. So that is key. And um, for the agricultural sector, as uh, hinted uh, by the Chamber of uh, Agribusiness gentlemen, uh, we rolled out a program dubbed Planting for Food and Jobs. Yes, uh, I would want to say that for every country, the grain needs become number one. That is why we have the silos and so on. And then the others follow. And uh, in the deliberations, we're looking at uh, feedstuff for poultry, for instance. But then you have to have your ears to the ground to listen to the feedback from those who are beneficiaries or who are going to produce the food. Are they going to be nourished with what you are promoting on that large scale? So I believe we have to have the two, the top and then the down. And then as you move on, you correct things in the way. Yeah. And then uh, we have issues with uh, local seed development, for instance. Research, yes. Government supports agricultural research to a large extent. Research in Ghana does not belong to the Ministry of Agriculture. It's with a different ministry, but we collaborate so well. We've done a lot with research, and for even the orange flesh with potato, the government has done a lot to get things done under WAP with Crops Research Institute, yes. So a lot go hand in hand, but I believe we have to be iterative. Otherwise, you get too far before the emerging issues are tackled. Yes. The other is utilizing research findings. And uh, for me, I think we still have to go on to put, in, put it in usable forms for those who benefit from it to take it on board and run with we have information sharing platforms, yes, but how widespread do we have these? Because we have to reach out to the masses. And one challenge we have as a country rests with our extension delivery efforts from the agricultural perspective. We know how to do a lot of the production, but the way it has to flow along the value chain have a few elements that we'll have to correct. So I think we'll have to just open up, fix the issues along the path, and I think we'll get there. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, from a nutrition perspective, we, we can see that maybe I will talk about what we have learned in, in Senegal regarding those different challenges. Um, during the next, uh, the last uh, decade, we, we we learned that it's really important to have uh, um, an institutional framework where you can uh, facilitate or enable um, the cross-sectoral approach. Uh, what does it mean? It it's not only having um, like a committee or a an institution, an institution that is working on nutrition, but it's also working on key processes uh, related to, to planning. How do we plan our policies or strategies when it comes to cross-sectoral aspects like nutrition or food system? Uh, when do health, agriculture, um, trade, um, education meet when and where? Um, it's really important to, to work on those different processes, to have this cross-sectoral uh, feeding and integration or, of all those different, uh, let's say, 
uh, domain or aspect uh, in the different policies we have to, to really look for impact and, and have a re relation with the different goals, national goals we have. When we talk about, uh, for example, anemia in Senegal or stunting in Senegal, who are the drivers, who are the key drivers, and what, do they, what, um, what are the es essential actions or interventions they have to do, uh, and when, and how will they do it. I think it's really important to have a platform uh, where uh, the, the different energy we need will, will be catalyzed and uh, optimized, let's say. It's really important. Uh, we, we think also that uh, having also, uh, uh, let's say, domestic investment uh, coming from the, the national budget and related to, to nutrition is, is, is really important. I think the government is the driver, the first driver of the change. Uh, if we really want to integrate the different policies, the, the government w w must be ahead. And the government also must um, have this, um, let's say, sustained approach uh, in terms of building uh, national capacities uh, for the key processes we have in terms of um, research capacities for, for, for research capacities for implementation and having a model, a national model, when we talk about um, uh, integrating nutrition to agriculture or integrating uh, nutrition to education in the education system, etc. So this leadership, national leadership also is, is, is really important. And when we talk about leadership, it's not um, just a word, but it has to be really marked by uh, the national processes where you can see that this is um, relevant for the country and it's a country driven uh, approach and specific to, 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 to the country. So we are still facing, I think, many challenges and we have some ideas uh, regarding the way to, to maybe uh, um, sharpen or improve the integration uh, re for example, with research, what we have done uh, when we were doing the last exercise, uh, let's say technical uh, analysis ex exercise or policy elaboration exercise, we, we convened the research stakeholders at the beginning because usually uh, we, we wait until we need them when we talk about the evaluation side. Uh, and it's at the moment we call them. But this time we call them at the beginning uh, of the, diff the process of, of uh, elaborating uh, the new strategic plan for nutrition in Senegal. And what is uh, really um, a hope for us is, we have, is that we have, regarding the Ministry of Higher Education and Research, we have an action plan for the next five years uh, regarding the contribution of research for nutrition goals in, in, in Senegal. And for us, it's a good practice, and we will start with uh, that action plan to see how uh, research can really be part of our key processes in terms of implementing our programs, or in terms of also uh, improving the way we, we work in nutrition in, in Senegal. Yeah, I think there's so many good things happening over time. Uh, to address these challenges and we hope that they will increase. I know that in Nigeria, um, before 2011, the agricultural policy had no mention of the word nutrition. And so the, the closest word you find in the policy is welfare. And you, you, so you, you talk about social sector. But over time, uh, with the leadership we had that period of time, which had continued until now, you had the first agricultural sector food security and nutrition strategy. And the nice thing is that the government also built this into the economic growth and recovery plan. So you have that level of visibility already and entrenching that into the system. 
and you have agriculture participating effectively within the sun, within the sun movement and those important platforms. And I think generally there's an increased understanding of the role of different sectors in addressing nutrition. So that has been going on. And I think that's also what needs to be strengthened. And I think from the CADE point of view, engaging with ECOWAS, there's been the move to see that nutrition is incorporated into the national agricultural investment plans. So that has been going on, and I think that's one mandate. I wouldn't know one of the outcomes of the biennial review of CADEP, but this is one important activity that has been going on. Government is increasingly forging partnerships yeah, with the private sector, uh, and then also with other international partners. And there's an increased role of the role the private sector can play. Yeah, either the multinationals play an important role trying to see how do we work with government to see that, to create a kind of a market for some of those important commodities that can help improve nutrition. So this is also something that has been going on. And it comes with its challenges, but it's also an innovative way to look at that and see what we can do. And there are various value chain development initiatives uh, that has been going on. And so, more a bit on, on, on the partnership, you see different projects and capacity development coming up, trying to, like some IFPRI collaborating with the various governments, trying to build capacity in West Africa, trying to increase policy analysis, uh, and then, uh, the use of real evidence to inform policy. So this little bit of things are ongoing and then you have the receptiveness of uh, the leadership to embrace this. The African Development Bank also uh, is helping with an initiative called the Africa Leaders for Nutrition, which is helping to see how do we develop the economic development narrative for nutrition. How do we make it visible to the ministers of finance to improve financing for nutrition? How do we create scorecards that can help evaluate progress around key indices and issues at the highest level, working with the African Union and making the most of those opportunities? And then uh, we're trying to see the efforts to see how can we use the mechanism of ECOWAS to ensure that the West African heads of states fully plug into the African Leaders for Nutrition Forum uh, and the initiative and take full advantage of that. So I think there are a number of things going on already. So, I mean, it, it's just that it's not enough, but there are signs that uh, things can get better with more commitment and uh, more attention. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony. Thank you. Um, from trade perspective, really, uh, I've seen these challenges over the years as with regards to more of the West African leaders making, uh, becoming more uh, protectionist in a way, uh, trying to protect the, their hegemony as in their presidency or government. And it's also a blockade for trade liberalization. For instance, um, it's, it takes a number of days to move a container from Ghana to Nigeria, and from Nigeria to Benin is almost non-existent. And those are some of the trade barriers that are in place. We have put together the West Africa Free Trade Movement, and uh, we've been doing a lot of work, a uh, lot of collaboration with the sub-region. But you still feel that um, with the involvement of ECOWAS, for instance, you would have expected that most of the states will give some leeway towards the movement of agricultural produce, but it's not working. And this is another challenge we need to be looking at. How do we, as uh, the sub-region, over 370 million people, okay, how do we take advantage of liberalization for the agriculture or the agribusiness economy? How do we take advantage of that? We have NEPAD bringing in, coming on board with a lot of things. We have the Agua all taking advantage of the sub-region. But how does the sub-region use its uh, numbers, okay, to empower their economic 
in intertrade, which is very essential. Now, going forward, we have also realized that if we're talking about policies, okay, most African countries, and in fact, that's also influence on trade, okay? So most Af African countries and West Africa and Ghana, we are fixated on the, um, bringing policies five years, seven years. Meanwhile, there is no existence of a national development plan, okay, that can last over 50 years, where we evolve the people over time. In, in countries or developed countries where policies have worked, they have worked because they were made to withstand time. We make policies to withstand our wishes, as in campaign promises by government coming, or opposition parties coming to government. So it must be a national consensus going forward for the West African sub-region. Are we looking at the sub-regional policy for the next 30 years in terms of trade liberalization? Are we looking at individual countries coming, um, doing their own policies that will last for 50 plus years? We need to look at how we can harness all these individual state trade policies and how it works effectively. I'll give you one example. I'm a farmer. I do farm management. I set up farms for clients. And last year, I did ginger, 50 acres for a client. After the time we were doing the projections, we were looking at 350 per, per bag, okay? As of three, four months we are about to harvest, ginger came from Nigeria. Now, the point is that it's cheaper to get ginger from Nigeria, but what about the, the farmer in Ghana, the indigenous farmer? Okay, as at the time we were about to sell, we couldn't sell even at 200. So you have made a loss already of 50%. How do you cater for your client investment? So this also calls for some form of um, local protection policy, okay? But uh, we shouldn't, uh, in a way, uh, do the policy too much. That will also affect the, the, the general trade environment. We need to look at it. How do we bring um, the local uh, indigenous companies to play in an effective, efficient industry? This is what we, we need going forward. Because um, when you involve the, the, the private sector in the formulation of policies, it does work. Then also we look at the bigger multinational companies, their social corporate responsibility. What is it directed to? Maybe as a government in the West Africa sub-region, we can say, okay, instead of over-concentrating on the oil industry, instead of over-concentrating social corporate responsibility for beauty pageant, and uh, music contest and all the rest. Can we make sure that 50% goes into research and nutrition? Because after all, for the musician to perform, if he doesn't eat good food, nutritious food, he will have enough energy to perform. So we, 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 we need as, a, as individuals, as private people, as professionals, as um, wherever you find yourself, we need to begin to have some self-retrospection uh, and begin to uh, ask ourselves the hard truth, okay? What I'm doing, would it change how I came to make it or to make it worse? And if we can start doing that, it will reflect in the general perspective of our policies that we shown out to the general uh, trade or the business or the, and the country in the whole. So the policy is between you and I, but you and I will have to tell the truth and for the government to also be truthful to you. Thank you. Thank you. Comments on what's going, what talk are the good of, ideas that are talk coming Talk of up? policy makers. We seated here are the policy makers. Because the people in government are temporary people. They come and go, and we are there. So we are not doing our work. It should be from bottom to the top. If we tell them what we want, they will do it or they go. Nigeria did not make it in the last quarter, in the last biannual NAIP uh, reports. NAIP is National Agriculture Investment Plan. Because of communication, because we have to report on agriculture, on water, on this and that, and the departments are not working together. We should talk to each other. 
we should be talking to each other. So when it was time, I was part of the committee to put together that report. And we lack information. We ran from, from pillar to post, and we could not make it. Now, after that incident, last year, the, uh, the minister formed a group that he calls Joint Sector Review. So this group is caused across agriculture, water health, and so on. We all come and discuss. So our report now is based on our M&E. So in the next two years, we are going to do better because you may have done the job, but there's no evidence. There's no proof. So these are the problems of, of developing countries. We don't have data. We don't have evidence. We cannot prove it. So I want us to start thinking in this way that we are the people is how we want our country to be that it will be. We should start to speak from the bottom so that those people who are there should hear us or they go. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's interesting how, it, how it, at, on the one hand, there's a lot of innovation going on at the national and the regional and indeed the international African Union level to, to bring together sectors and to get a nutrition policy into them. But there's also a, a feeling I'm getting that, that um, the actual basis of the food system, the agriculture production system, is sort of handicapped by problems of, of trade and access and, and production that, that, that is essential to get in place before all of this collaboration and cooperation can, can be achieved. Um, I hope there's a chance for, for the panel to comment on that, but it's time now to go to the audience. And Hi, um, my name is Jolene and I'm from the University of Westminster. Um, my question goes to, um, I think there's a lot of back and forth about food security. And um, from, I did my, some field work here in Ghana. And what I realized that the message about food security, insecurity and nutrition insecurity wasn't really differentiated to the extent that even at the grassroots, there were people who equate giving food as giving nutrition. And even some stakeholders or key persons that throughout my research I've worked with could not even differentiate between these two. And if we don't get the fundamentals right, there's no way um, if we are going to advise on policy, these policies will go right. Because there are people who are supposed to be key persons in nutrition who cannot differentiate between what food insecurity is and what nutrition insecurity is. And speaking to, I spoke to mothers, and a lot of African women pride themselves of giving ch their children good food. And if they can understand what good food is and what is not good. We, we as policymakers, we are not able to differentiate this message for the populace. It's very difficult to talk about food security and then in another breath we are talking about nutrition security, so reconciling these messages. I want to know what the panel has to say with that. Thank you. Yeah, mine is um, on um, the fact that there's little or no investment in research, yes. Hmm. But sometimes we tend to concentrate so much on the researchers themselves. We have to remember always that the farmers are co-researchers, and sometimes we tend to I don't want to use the word neglect, that may be too strong. Um, you know, um, sidetrack so them when it comes to planning of such researches. Remember, what we need is a positive change in attitude, isn't it? And once we have that, I know that farmers will come out in full because they know the complex situations they are in. It is these same people that will tell you about their environment, which is what you are looking for, which is also what you are going to translate to your beautiful data. So, and at the end of the day, you still find out that there isn't much feedback. We're talking about nutritional value or nutri nutrients. We don't sometimes think about also their nutritional status. So I feel that in every research, there's also reason to make policies towards ensuring that the, the, the researchers, our core researchers, in quotes, if you like, you know, get almost um, enough attention or enough inclusion, starting from the planning, implementation, and evaluation of every project which makes a sound and sustainable project. Thank you. Thank you. In Nigeria, I want to know if we really have uh, 
policy addressing food system, you know, uh, food system as it relates to nutrition and health. Because I want to cite an example, and then based on my uh, example, I want you to react. In the, uh, in the university where I work, I raised some belts, some broilers, and uh, I had two systems. I, 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 I used two different systems. One was organic, and the other one was inorganic. And uh, the approximate uh, cost of sales was uh, like, uh, like uh, one, 2,000, uh, 2000 naira for the organic, and uh, 1,800 naira for the one prepared, uh, for the one that was raised without, you know, using organic uh, system. And when I look at the difference, just like uh, less than $5. And to my surprise, we expected those people at high level, like the professors, to buy the organic, organic uh, the, the, the broilers produced, you know, using the organic system. They didn't buy it. They preferred to buy the cheap one. So I don't know. If people you have categorized to buy healthy food just pre prefer to just buy. The same thing, we prepare some organic, we produce some organic rice in Amadou Bello University, huh. in the Department of Agronomy. And of course, it was so surprising that the professors were not buying it. They prefer, okay. prefer to go for the, yeah. you know, for the inorganic. Uh, so I don't know, from the ministry, from the, do we really have, have we even reached the level of talking about, you know, food system for nutrition and health? We, should, we are still talking about uh, food system for food consumption. What we need, what is currently happening is that people just want to eat, whether it is <laughs> nutritious or it's not nutritious. Great. Just to have something, you know. So I think we, are, we have currently, I was discussing with our Thank leader, uh, with our leader yesterday, I think the federal government is trying to develop a food yeah. strategic uh, uh, system for 2050, hmm. because the population of Nigeria is growing. By 2050, our population will be around 390 million. And so we are developing a roadmap. But looking at the old resort, we discovered that nutrition is still lacking. We are still talking about what to eat and not Seems that way. You know, the Great. quality Thanks of Thanks very much. Between um, um, Director uh, Paulina and uh, Farmer Morrison, I just heard something. While Father Morrison was talking about orange flesh sweet potato not being promoted, the director was saying it is being promoted. And that's Ghana. That clearly shows the problem of communication. There is serious problem between what, for example, WAP is doing and what's happening at the local level. That shows clearly and it's also in policy. You realize that those who implement at the community level, at the district level, have no idea what the policy is about. So we have that disconnect between policy and what has happened on the ground. And it's almost in every country. And that's a very serious problem. Then Madame Lizzie, she was talking about um, probably bringing more fight between health and agriculture. If we continue like that, we'll never get anywhere. Because health will show you why nutrition is important there. Agriculture will also show it. Even sanitation will show it. Education will show it. So our real problem is who coordinates nutrition? Ghana, we were, we've been trying to see whether the presidency can take it up. If you put nutrition at the presidency, and it was a good example, because when we tried the presidency calling a meeting, it worked. Ministers came. If you let the Minister of Agriculture call a meeting, the Minister of Health would not come. So we have that problem of where it should be, be so that coordination can be done and done very well. And I think we shouldn't cause a fight between all the uh, ministries. Let's <laughs> get somebody who can get all of them together. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thanks very much. All right, thank you very much. Uh, for the definition for food security and nutrition, I think that is very clear. There are indicators to measure food security, whether at national level, household level. There are indicators to measure these. 
and nutrition. When we talk about nutrition, it is a bit complex because it is not just the food, but the body's ability to also utilize the food. So nutrition, yes, it cuts across a good mix of foods. And uh, we are suffering today because we have a lot of diminishing foods. A lot of our crops are becoming extinct. We don't have them anymore. So it reflects in some diseases that are servicing, which hitherto was not there. You find consumption being one way. You have homes eating rice constantly. When we were growing up, we had different foods. Now, it's so sad our young ladies do not even know some of these foods we used to eat because they've come, become used to, I don't know what to term it, but some straight foods and that is what we see all the time. And as experts, we also do not insist on what we should be served. As part of our food service, if we would demand for certain things, I think we'll be going in a particular direction. Because for, I would want to cite this ex, uh, hotel as an example. If we're coming here for a nutrition conference, we should be eating healthy. And we should be in a position to insist that we get a percentage of A, B, C, D, and if we have our guests, our clients joining, they know it is different from the daily affair. So for nutrition, yes, it is a good mix of the foods that will nourish us. Yes. And I think also I would want to talk a bit about our, um, our environment, which has changed quite markedly. Yes, it has affected us in several ways. Things we used to have, not the old ones, but what we even grow for sustenance has become a bit challenged. We, I wouldn't want to talk about the climate change and its impact, but it is also having an effect on nutrition and the food system as a whole. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, maybe I will talk um, first about the question from the first question regarding food security and and nutrition. I think uh, the, if if we look at the different uh, frameworks, uh, nutrition framework or nutrition um, uh, or food security framework, we, we see those different aspects in both. Uh, we can see some food security in the nutrition framework, and we can see some nutrition in the food security framework. And in fact, uh, of the, the, we can see some battle regarding the, the conception of regarding who is uh, more important than the other. Sometimes it's a, it's a battle. But for me, uh, this is not the most important part. The most important part is where do we meet nutrition and food security? Where do we meet? Do we meet in an uh, emergency context, if we meet in an emergency context, how do we work together? Do we meet in a uh, uh, nexus con context, how do we work together? Do we meet in a development co context, how do we meet together? Do we meet in an economic perspective, how do we work together? And I think that in each country has, in each country we, we, we may have some, I mean, framework that is really putting together all those different aspects, uh, integrating also climate change, gender, many cross-sectoral uh, domains. I think it's the most important part than doing this philosophical aspect saying, uh, it's like, as we say in French, la, les oeufs, uh, entre la poule et les oeufs. Who is before? I mean, sometimes in some countries you can see so, those type of battles, and it's useless for me. It's yes, chicken and eggs. It's useless. Uh, this is the. Secondly, I wanted just to to raise the the important 
uh, intervention related to the institutional framework. In Senegal, we have experimented the nutrition at the president office and the prime minister office. Uh, we can share the experience with Ghana in another context, maybe. We, we did both. Uh, in a project perspective, we had uh, nutrition at the president office, and in a programmatic approach, we had it in the prime minister's office, and both can work, and we have some uh, key lessons we have, and we can share uh, with you maybe in a, uh, uh, if you have the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, so very quick points on, I, I, I reviewed several conceptual frameworks on nutrition. The UNICEF, the FIVIMS, and if I felt they're saying the same thing but how we interpret them and how we help people understand that no single sectoral domain can deliver nutrition outcome, but we need to find how to create a common understanding and work together to deliver that. So, but there's a lot of work to do that so that policymakers understand, technocrats understand, and the public also understand. Engaging farmers, very important. Uh, very, I just want to very quickly, I was wondering, I mean, why you go to the public market and you don't see biofortified foods. You need to find them around certain specialized channels. And we're trying to understand why we discovered that, for instance, if you take about Proverb, I mean, maize. Farmers that grow it in the north, farmers don't know about it or they don't want to grow it for certain reasons. It yield issues, drought resistance. So engaging farmers to understand their preferences and building nutrition considerations is extremely important. So I, I completely get that. I think we need to really engage farmers the more and get their perspectives. On the Nigeria, chicken, organic and inorganic. I think I want to be careful about how we define healthy foods. I know that somebody presented a research on the definition of healthy foods, and I wouldn't really want to go away that it just have to be organic. I don't think, I wouldn't know, but I don't think this is where we are, and that's what the definition is. But when choices are limited, when there is po limited by poverty, limited by ignorance, then it can affect what people consume. So it's not always about the price. The price is important, but the knowledge also matters. And I think we have systems that are meant to address that. And finally, on coordination, I think it's a problem in most of our West African countries. It has moved from food science and technology to health, to agriculture, to budget and planning in Nigeria. But there are serious capacity issues, even where you put it in a multi-sectoral ministry. And so addressing important capacity issues. The Ministry of Budget and Planning has the mandate, and ordinarily will bring all sectors together, but the ministry itself is not internally coordinated, and it doesn't have the capacity to really bring all sectors to nutrition. So these are some important issues we need to look at. Thanks. Thank you, Anthony. Final comment. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, going forward, I think that uh, most of the things we need to do has to do with uh, education, primarily uh, from the very fundamental point of our uh, basic education. We need to inculcate that into the school children because it's, it's mindset. It has mm -hmm. to be mindset that, um, yes, nutrition is very essential, whereas we push together food security and inculcate the two. However, the very beginning of uh, production, we're looking at good seeds. If our, if our farmers are not getting the good seeds that they need, then at that very beginning, you will not be talking about nutritious uh, crops because um, that influences what goes into uh, cooking. So we need to look at that. However, um, how best are we doing to take care of the aflatoxins? the various challenges we've, we have with post-harvest, okay? It's very essential. Most African countries have not taken into consideration giving the necessary logistical support to their agriculture extension offices. How best are we doing to give them the necessary support? Mm -hmm. In developed countries, we have seen sustained policy advocacy and lobbying. In Africa, it's non-existent. The farmer doesn't know his right. Mm -hmm. The farmer doesn't know that. 
the, the policies have to emanate from him and not from the top. Uh, agriculture in Ghana is um, or at different level from national, regional, and district. Mm. So we have a system. We need a systematic approach in uh, trying to solve this. Uh, we need to have a sustained policy and advocacy from various areas. As we speak now, Ghana's um, food security and nutrition policy have expired last year, and uh, we are still struggling to bring up a new one. So uh, we don't have to wait for policies to expire but we need to make sure that there is a new one before the expiration date. Thank you. Thank you. Lizzie. No more time for me. <laughs> uh, my last word is, we all need to talk to each other. Agriculture, health, res uh, research, the, uh, the producer, consumer, and private sector. We don't need to fight. Everybody is key to achieving this, our goal. So can we communicate and open up and let A know what B is doing and adopt and accept that we are all important in this game? Thank you very much. <laughs> well, communication, a, a good point to end on. And um, I won't summarize. Uh, I think we've had a fantastic uh, input. But one message I do want to sort of um, reinforce is how much of the discussion was about the need for research and the need for communicating research and the need for involving both policymakers and farmers in the design of the research that we do. And I think those are some really strong messages from this region about how we, as the research community in agriculture, nutrition, and health, uh, should conduct our work and how important it is. So I, I hope that's a uh, will serve as a great encouragement, and I thank very much the panel for um, sharing their regional thoughts and their expertise and helping us to see a little bit clearer what, what our mission is. So thank you. Thank you.